Hi guys, Adam with Snow Performance. Today we're going to be putting a water methanol injection kit on this 2012 Subaru STI. Now we're going to be using our part number 2110 kit dash BRD. Now that's a Subaru specific injection system and it comes with a lot of bonus parts that are going to make the installation go really smooth and look awesome. To start off, it does come with a two and a half gallon trunk mounted reservoir. Now for guys with an early model Subaru, a lot of you are using your intercooler sprayer reservoir as the water methanol injection tank, but for the newer models, they don't have that, so the two and a half gallon is a great option. Keeps everything out of the way in the trunk and looks great. The next part we're gonna go over is the spacer plate. Now, of course, you know the Subaru intercooler is right above that throttle body and there's almost no space to mount a nozzle. That makes the throttle body spacer a huge bonus in order to have a spot to mount the nozzles without having to modify the whole intake tract. Now, that does come with two OEM Subaru gaskets to make sure everything bolts back together and there's no leaks. Now, these model-specific kits do come with braided line. That's gonna be all black anodized fitting and uh, stainless steel braided line to make sure the system lasts forever and looks awesome. We're also gonna have a solenoid and check valve. Now those are safety and performance features. The check valve is gonna make sure every time your system activates, the fluid is primed right up to the nozzle and you get immediate cooling and octane. And the solenoid is gonna make sure that that large reservoir in the trunk never moves fluid unless your system wants it to. Lastly, these systems do use our really popular VC50 controller. Now that's a digital gauge controller that'll fit in a standard gauge pod. Now that's going to have variable color, allow you to adjust all parameters from the driver's seat, and it can handle up to 50 PSI of boost, so no matter how built you are, it's going to work great for you. Now these Subarus are huge into the aftermarket tuning department, and Cobb Access and a lot of other popular tuners make a lot of great power out of them. But as soon as you up that boost and get a more aggressive tune going, the Subarus really want a lot cooler air charge and some more octane to really open up that power. That's where this system comes in. We're going to cool down the IATs and boost octane so you get the most out of that tune. So let's go ahead and check out the tools we're going to need to get this installed and get going. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and go over the tools we're gonna to need to get this project installed. Now with any automotive project, uh, a nice set of rags is gonna be great to get everything cleaned up that we're taking apart. Also a set of screwdrivers and a decent set of pliers are gonna be really handy. Those are almost always helpful. Now we are gonna be wiring this system together, so we're gonna want a wiring kit to include wire cutters, crimpers, everything you'd need to make wiring connections the way you like to. We're gonna be soldering on this project, but you can also use crimps, blue butts, whatever is most comfortable for you. We're gonna want a full socket set and a full open-ended bread set to tackle any bolts that we come across as far as disassembly or assembling the kit. Now with any socket set, it's always really handy to have an extension to get to those hard to reach nuts and bolts. Not pictured here, we are gonna want a power drill. Now that's gonna be so we can drill holes to mount the reservoir and the pump. We're additionally gonna want a set of floor jacks and or a lift. That's to get the car high enough in the air so we can get underneath to run that water methanol line from the trunk up to the hood. Let's go ahead and jump into the installation. For the first step of the installation, we're gonna go ahead and piece together the components to get the system ready to install and piece together with the braided line. Now our first step is gonna to be to put the reservoir fitting in the bottom of the reservoir tank, of course using E6000 on those threads. Now E6000 sealant is going to be used on any national pipe thread fitting, but the 4AN fittings, which can be identified by their cone-shaped tips, are self-sealing and don't require any sealant. Now the throttle body spacer plate has two injection ports on it. We're only going to be using one, so we've uh, used the included plug to block off the second port, but this can be used to reference boost or inject nitrous again. The other components that we're going to piece together before we start the rest of the assembly are the nozzle holder, the check valve, the solenoid, and the pump. Now these all have fittings that screw in either side and allow us to connect these to the braid line sections that are going to comprise the rest of the kit. Now to get these pieced together, we're just going to need the included E6000 sealant, a 3 quarter wrench, a 14 millimeter, a 13 millimeter, and an Allen wrench. So once we have these all sealed up and pieced together, we're going to go ahead and jump back to the trunk where we're going to start with installing the reservoir and the pump. We're back here at the trunk and we're going to start mounting our water methanol system. Now the first steps are going to be to find a good place to put your reservoir, pump, and solenoid. Now a solenoid is going to be used on any trunk mounted system to make sure there's no siphoning or draining. Now on the Subaru here we've got a really nice little hollow to fit our two and a half gallon. So we decided to put our, tank, our pump, I should say, right next to it, do a curly cue with the line and then just loop it right up to the solenoid. 
Now this is a little more exposed than some of the installations, but we're still going to have tons of cargo space and it should work really nice. So once we have it all mocked up and we're happy with the way things are looking, we're going to go ahead and use a supplied hardware and hard mount this in place, and then we'll go ahead and start running the line up to the front. Now we're going to take this line and actually pop it through a grommet that's already existing in the floor of the trunk. It'll go under the car and then we'll meet you up at the hood and continue the installation. Okay, so we have the water methanol line going through the bottom of the trunk and then popping up right here to connect to our system. Now we've got this run right below this foam filler plate and that's going to go across by the spare tire and through an existing body grommet so there's no modifications necessary. So now all we have to do is drop the cover plate in, which is where we've mounted the reservoir pump and solenoid, hook it up and we'll be good to go. So as you can see, we've gone ahead and mounted all the components to the uh, trunk floor cover plate. Now this is really nice because it does show off the components and we've just mounted them all with the included hardware. The other nice part about doing it this way is we still have access to the spare tire area if we need to do that and this doesn't lose us any sort of trunk functionality. So all we have left to do is to go ahead and hook that line up make the electrical connections and we're all done back here. So we're gonna go under the car, run that line to the engine and we'll meet you there. Now we've got the water methanol line coming down out of the trunk and under the car. Our job now is to run this forward to the engine bay. Now a couple things to keep an eye out for while we're running this line under the car is any suspension components that are gonna move and abrade the line or even crush it. We're gonna to wanna to keep it as well protected as possible and secure it against unnecessary movement. Now if you can find your fuel lines running from the tank up to the engine, that's a great path to follow as they're usually very well protected. We're going to run this up to the engine bay and we're going to meet you under there and we're going to hook it up to the throttle body spacer. So we've got the water methanol line run under the vehicle, up the driver's side of the firewall by the brake booster and so we're coming in it from the right side here. Now we've got the nozzle not installed yet because we still need to test the system but it's going to be installed right in the throttle body spacer right behind this intake manifold. Now you can't really see it but what we did to install it was actually remove the intercooler. Now this seems like an extra step but it actually made it a lot easier to get at this throttle body here. So with the undercooler mount bolts undone, you can actually rotate this intercooler up and out of the way, which gives you access to the throttle body, which we just pop off, slide the spacer in, and then reinstall the hardware. Now with the spacer in, the throttle body has moved position a bit, so that the intercooler is not going to reuse its factory mounting locations, but once we get the inlet tube and the charge pipe to the intercooler secured, we're going to have plenty of secure mounting, and so it's nothing to worry about at all. So let's go ahead and get the controller fired up so we can test the system out and make sure the nozzle sprays properly. All right guys, we just finished up the installation in the engine bay. Now we're in the driver's seat checking out the controller. Now this is the brains of the system. This is where we're gonna test fire the system, where all the settings are gonna be made, and where you're gonna monitor the system operation. Now this controller is pretty easy to wire up. We managed to find a great 12 volt key on source right in the fuse panel under the driver's wheel. And then we took the ground wire right through the firewall along with the boost reference tube. We grounded the ground right to the battery negative terminal, and then we grabbed boost reference from the blow-off valve. Now with this, the only wire we needed to run back to the trunk was actually the pump control wire and then we grounded the pump to a source right back in the trunk. Now checking out this controller, there's a lot of information it can give us. You'll see right here where it's listing zero, that's actually going to act as an active boost gauge so you'll always know what your immediate boost is. And that empty bar graph wireframe below it is going to fill up and show you exactly how hard the system's injecting at the moment. Now this main screen does have a prime button, which when we hit it will manually kick the pump on for a couple seconds. Now this is a great way to prime up the system to make sure we have fluid up to the nozzle and also to make sure there's no leaks. As we go through the screens, the first screen we're going to come to is our boost start. This is the boost pressure that we're going to start initial injection at. And then boost full is going to be the pressure that we're going to go to full injection. This is going to be 100% pump pressure, everything the system can give it. Now this controller does have an option for a secondary power nozzle, which is a second nozzle that we can activate via a solenoid at a third boost point, but we're not going to reuse that in this application. Now this controller does have variable screen colors and variable color for the bar graph, so you can make it your own. We also have a manual on-off for the injection, which lets you turn injection off manually if you don't want to use any fluid for a while. 
and then we're back to the main screen. So setup is really easy. Uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, test prime the system right now, check for leaks, make sure the nozzle's spraying. Then all we have left to do is pop the nozzle in and we're ready for a test drive. All right, we got the system all installed and we're taking it out for a quick test drive. So far, the car is loving it. Now, this is the only kit that is made for a Subaru with the spacer plate and everything all ready to go. It was an easy bolt-on installation and we're already out on the road. Now, we just have some initial settings here, but I can already tell you the engine is loving it. I'm gonna drop a couple gears here, do a quick pull. And you can see the engine has no hesitation and this engine has all the octane and it's getting way cooler air than it would on its own. That allows us to run these hot tunes and never worry about the engine and it's even cleaning it while we do it. Now you can see on the controller we have a red and white color scheme but it has a ton of options so you can customize it to your preference. We're actually gonna be coming out with a video pretty soon where we do a real world comparison of pre and post water meth injection on the IATs so you know exactly how much one of these kits can cool down your intake temperatures. If you have any questions about this or any other kit we offer, don't hesitate to give us a call. We'll make sure we get you set up with the best kit for your car. I'm Adam, and we'll catch you next time.